Well, let's turn our attention now to the country which is facing the worst break, uh, outbreak of uh, the pandemic, the United States. The total number of confirmed cases in America, 4,36,969. Those who've recovered, 22,956. And look at that death toll, 14,909. Now compare that with, in, uh, with India. India has 5,865 cases, 169 people in total have died. Now, that number is a matter of concern, no doubt. But compared to the U.S. death toll of 14,909, uh, we, we are doing much, much better. But the big question in the United States now, and it's important to know if the United States is on the verge of getting this under control, um, and what lessons, if any, can be learned from that, because the U.S. President Donald Trump has spoken about flattening the curve, uh, is uh, we are joined by Surinder Purohit, a leading surgeon from Ann Arbor in Michigan. We're also joined by Dr. Arya Parker, uh, a radiologist in Seattle. Thank you both very much uh, for joining us. Um, Dr. Purohit, let me come to you first. There's been optimism about plasma being used as a possible... Uh, solution in treating patients with COVID-19. There is research which has come out of the University of Maryland, for example. It's being looked at very closely over here in India as well. What are your views about this as a possible line of treatment? Well, first of all, the idea of giving antibodies to patients who are critically ill uh, from diseases like COVID-19 has been around for, for many, many decades. And it's a very promising treatment. And just here in the United States also, the FDA has recently approved uh, using uh, a plasma co convalescent treatment in patients in the setting of clinical trials. And I think it's a very promising treatment. Obviously, we need more data to uh, see how things will pan out. And the idea, though, is to use the antibodies from patients who have recovered from uh, COVID-19 infection and transfuse them into patients who are critically ill and in the hopes that it can stabilize them until their bodies produce their own antibodies. Dr. Parker, um, hydroxychloroquine is being exported from India to the United States. There was a bit of a back and forth between our governments on how much or whether India would export this. Now it's clear that India is sending it across. Uh, how important is hydroxychloroquine in treating this? How important are those Indian uh, exports? Good morning. Uh, I do think that it was commendable leadership on the part of India to decide to export hydroxychloroquine to the U.S. It's badly needed over here. It's uh, being used now in critically ill patients. Um, as far as the efficacy of several treatments that are being used right now, uh, this is just one of them hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine, azithromycin, the plasma transfusions, and as well as some experimental drugs, which are utilized for the so-called cytokine storm that happens in some critically ill COVID patients after about seven to 10 days. All these therapies are going to have some effect. There are several trials that are going on across the country now uh, that are involving moderate and critically ill patients. And I think I do believe that sharing mm -hmm. this kind of data, sharing medications and sharing PPE ventilators across the globe is going to be one aspect in helping to mitigate the scourge that is a pandemic that hits us all. Dr. Purohit, uh, the U.S. president has spoken about flattening the curve. Um, do you believe that that's realistically possible in America in the near future? Uh, or is that still a ways away? So, uh, so what we're seeing over the last few days is the the, uh, the rise in the number of newly diagnosed cases seems to be stabilizing. Now, whether this is a pattern, I think we'll see. In fact, today's number is the lowest number we've had in the last eight days. It's still more than a thousand patients, but hopefully this will be a pattern. I think the key thing is to uh, continue the social isolation policies and uh, wearing the masks and all the things that have been advised by public health officials to mitigate the further spread of this virus. And uh, Dr. Parker, how have um, different policies in different American states seen very different outcomes? Um, where you are in Seattle, how, how, has, the, how has the outbreak of COVID-19 been handled? Uh, what, sort of, uh, what are your views about how things are going where you live? 
Seattle was the first area in the U.S. to be hit by COVID-19. Within days of uh, the first deaths that occurred at the Life Care Center in Kirkland, there were immediate steps largely taken by some of our big tech companies and headquartered for Amazon and Microsoft, um, as well as some of the um, Starbucks employees, Google and Facebook, that urged their employees to stay home. This happened within two to three days of the initial outbreak. Subsequently, the University of Washington that has 40 and 50,000 students um, decided that all the classes would go online. Schools were shut. Then we had a stay at home order in place as early as March 16th. And we have definitely flattened the curve as a result of these early mitigation efforts, uh, social distancing, Although we can um, currently go out for groceries and gas and healthcare to the pharmacy, I think early mitigation efforts, social distancing, and intelligently navigating this pandemic is going to be the way out of flattening the curve. We have actually successfully flattened the curve in our state. Yep. Um, just last week, the, uh, the Army Field Hospital that was supposed to be opened, they have decided not to open it. Yeah. And we are going to send the same material and um, resources to another state that needs it. Sure. We had 400 extra ventilators that we have returned to the government. And those are um, going to be used in other hotspots of the country as they need it. I Absolutely. think the entire West Coast, uh, Washington and Oregon and California, uh, although we were earlier hit, we can actually see the flattening of the curve already. Well, those are absolutely and, um, really impressive signs in lesson. some parts of the United For States. Us, and it certainly gives uh, a lot help. of hope, uh, Doctor, yes. uh, in terms of what you're saying. And I'm sorry I'm having to interrupt because we're running short on time on this program. But it's important that social distancing is maintained. That's going to save all of us uh, and so many millions of people across the world. It is working in India to a large extent. The question is, can it still keep working? I'd like to thank all of you, both of you, very much for joining us.